A week after suffering the franchise's worst loss in 27 years, Stephen A., the Steelers responded in a big way on Sunday night. Le'Veon Bell didn't skip a beat in his return from a three-month uh, game suspension, excuse me, three-game suspension, violating the NFL's substance abuse policy, rushing 18 times for 144 yards. Big Ben Roethlisberger threw five TD passes for the fifth time in his career. Pittsburgh crushed Kansas City 43-14 to on Sunday night. You must be feeling better, but I want... Uh Okay. I'm feeling much better. Good. I'm feeling much better. Um, I didn't like having to go off about the Steelers after they lost to the Eagles. Um, and I certainly don't like saying that my favorite coach in the world, Mike T, Mike yep. Tomlin, had a bad day. Yeah. I don't like that. You just called him out to make sure I they didn't call him out. I just say he had a bad day. I called the players out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, the only reason I mentioned it because you're the coach. I mean, your team didn't look like they right. wanted to play. And Mike T, as you well know, will openly, man, call it like you see it. That's right. what. That's why they, he, he rolls like that. He's a man's man. They didn't show up last week. They were an embarrassment mm -hmm. and a disgrace to the Pittsburgh Steelers organization <laughs> and tradition. And they deserve to be called out the way that they did. But they showed up last night and made Kansas City look like they looked a week earlier. That is the Steelers that I know. Those are the Steelers I expected to see. I am very proud on Good. this day <laughs> that they showed up and made amends for that debacle that they gave us mm -hmm. the week before. And all is well with Good. the world now, with the exception of when Brady comes to town. Other than that... Good. I am feeling very, very good about my Steelers. Once again, I am proud that you showed up and reminded <laughs> the world that you're actually football players because they look like a bunch of chumps the week earlier. And that is inexcusable. And you know I'm right. They did look like chumps against the Eagles. They didn't show up that game. That is not good. Happy losing is one thing. Happy life but not losing it was one thing. But not like that. Not I like agree that. With that. Okay. Brian, you know this organization inside and out. Do you want to jump in before I get into it? Well, because he, he can adjudicate yeah. this uh, yeah. debate. This is a Le'Veon Bell game. Le'Veon Bell has been the best running back when he's on the field, mm -hmm. in football, college or pro, mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, by so much it's not worth talking about when he's on the field, and he did it again last night. Not only the 144 yards, but the 89 yards after contact which is by far an NFL best this season. But it's not just the production, mm -hmm. which is absolutely all-world elite. It's the fact that you have to account for him. They split him out wide. They put him in the slot, out of the backfield, catching passes, running the ball. He, can, he is one of these Marshall Falk, LaDainian Tomlinson style players, and he's on that level wherever you want to put him, maybe not ahead of Marshall Falk, but he's up on that elite, elite level I've ever seen doing all those things. And he's a player like... You know, when I go on about Odell Beckham Jr., it's not just the production, it's the amount of resources other teams' defenses have to put towards that guy. Or Lamar Jackson, we saw it again. So much of your game plan, so much of your resources on your team, which are finite, you don't have infinite resources right. on the field, have to go to stopping Lamar Jackson or accounting for him. It opens things up for other guys. You can say the same thing about Aaron Rodgers, Cam Newton, Andrew Luck. Whether they're on good teams or bad teams, whether they're putting up the numbers or not, they make players around them better by the sheer fact that the other team has to game plan for that guy. That's what Le'Veon Bell did, and you saw the difference in the Steelers without him and with him, night and day, and the Chiefs are a good team. Yeah. So it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely 100% right. Le'Veon Bell is the best running back in the NFL all around. It's not close. It's not a debate. It's nothing we probably even need to talk about here because if anybody disagrees with you, then they don't know football. We saw what he brings to the table last night, the way they moved him around. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, the reason they won this game, the MVP of this game, they go by the name of Wentz, Sproles, Smallwood, Matthew, them up. Yep. Barner. Because see what happens, right? When you're doing well and you feel real good, like me and my son had this issue, right? This summer they were doing all these camps and he was getting all these interceptions. I'm like, hey, Jordan, you're not running. Jordan, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. But he was doing so well and everybody was talking about him so good, he just didn't want to listen to that. And then you get to the first jamboree and he doesn't play as well. And then we watch the film and he's not hustling. And so now I can talk to him any kind of way I want to and be as disrespectful as I want because now you've shown me you don't listen and it has now affected you. 
That's what that's what Todd Haley but, said. But Ryan, Todd I, there's Haley, more than that, I think, going on no, here. No, there's not more than that. Todd, listen, this team in the last five games averages over 30 points a game in Pittsburgh. No, no, what I'm, saying, what they is, do. What I'm saying is you said, I thought you were going here with that, and I agree with this point in terms of the ball going to Wentz or these guys. You're facing a similar offense. You're facing, you just faced Peterson, now you're facing Andy Reid. There's a pretty good way to prep for Andy Reid is, is Peterson the week before. Well, listen, Spencer Ware fumbles. Cam Hayward tips the ball and gets an interception and is down here for that. Marcus Peters, one of the best ball hawks in the league. If you watch his film, he's sloppy. He doesn't press well. He's a guy that always looks at the quarterback. You run by him with Sammy Coates earlier. Now you have a safety who decides to take an over route on a tight end instead of lean to Antonio Brown. That has nothing to do with scouting Doug Peterson because of Andy Reid. That just has to do with not playing sound defense and playing sound ball offensively. This is what happened. The Steelers were feeling really good about themselves coming into this season and the way they played in the first two weeks. Now, Coach Tomlin breaks them down and says, hey, we're going to watch this film as a team. Ben Roethlisberger, you're going to be accountable. Antonio Brown, you're going to be accountable. Defensively, Lawrence Timmons. Defensively, Mike Mitchell. We're going to talk about this together. I'm going to point out what you're doing in front of your teammates. So now, what do I say if I'm Ross Cockrell? What do I say if I'm villain the waiver? That's true. That's, a, that's, those, that's if, how Greg Popovich treated Tim Duncan all of those years. And because you could coach Tim Duncan, you could coach everybody else. I get what you're saying. But that's why I would give the credit to Mike T, Mike Tomlin, because of that. Because after that debacle against Philadelphia, you go back to the film room, but you also and you motivate them and show them how they didn't show up because they were feeling themselves just a little bit you too take, much. If you take Le'Veon Bell off the field, that is not the same. I hear what you're saying. I'm not arguing against that point. What I'm saying is Le'Veon Bell makes the difference. You cannot defend anyone else on the Pittsburgh Steelers the same way because he's on the field. Not just that they can move him around, but the elite way he can play at every position you well, move we're not gonna, to. We're not going to poo-poo yep. anything about Le'Veon yep. Bell because we know all around he's the best coming out of the backfield. We get that, but the flip side to it, he had a 1,361-yard season in 2014. Wasn't eligible to play for the players, got injured again in that wild-card playoff loss to the Baltimore Ravens. Only played six games last year. During Durability seems to be a question mark with him. And even though we won't question his ability, we will question and can question his availability when it counts. Because in his career thus far, when he's been needed most, whether it's for health reasons or other reasons, he hasn't been available. And he would need to be available in order for the Steelers I, to And, and I will say this. I'll, with a I, I'll, I'll say this. As, as good as Le'Veon Bell is, we saw what D'Angelo Williams has done as a backup mm -hmm. in, well into his 30s. The person they can't lose is number seven. No question. And when number seven plays like he plays last night, he's with the Brady's, he's with the Rodgers. Mm -hmm. And so though Le'Veon Bell is the important piece because of what he can do, yep. you have to have been focused and protected, and that's what we saw last night. But the question was, who deserves the most credit? And you're going Mike Tomlin, Le'Veon Bell. Bell. The Eagles. Eagles. The Eagles. The Eagles. Fly, Eagles, they just, fly. They win in games well, every week. I consider, I consider Tomlin and Eagles the, the same, same thing. actually. Yeah. Yeah. But all right, Ryan, go ahead. That means you lost all the way. Thank, thank, you, for, thank you for your insight there. That's the good version of number seven. How does Brian Ezekiel Elliott, the rookie, ran for 138 yards and a touchdown, and Dak Prescott, the rookie, threw for 245 yards and two scores to help Dallas over Come an early 14-point deficit to beat San Francisco 24-17 on Sunday. The Cowboys are now 3-1 without Tony Romo. Brian Clark in the house. How are we doing? Good. How are you guys? We are good. I want to start good when with... you're here. I tell you, what, I enjoy the, the thrilling college football talk. Uh -huh. You guys got me pumped up, man. So I started reliving the game. I, I, well, I, I, it's, I want you to know, because I got something up of love for you, my brother. I got number love. Uh -oh, here it comes. Uh -oh. I, set you, me up. I want you to know that I'm really, really happy that you find something to be happy about when it comes to college football, considering what's going on. Whoa! LSU. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just Every saying. Every time I, mean, I come I know on, I know y'all won this weekend. We look good now. Just saying, yeah, yeah, who, you talk about, you talking you roll tide now. Missouri. You're talking roll tide. They're going to have to see us. Go Tigers. They're going to have to see us. Really? Yeah, really? Really? Okay. Really? Really? By the way, when we were arguing last week, oh, people don't want football on Thursday. Yeah. Stop. We get it Thursday, now the Friday night games, Saturday, Sunday, tonight. I hold love on, hold it. On, hold love it. I still, I've still always been against Thursday night football. Always. As a cons not as a well, consumer. I, I, I think why, working for yeah, I, I think Help. the NFL should be on that. Sundays Help and Mondays. Safety -wise. All right. All I know is Thursday, I got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. A lot you. of days. Well, Ryan, very good to have you. Can we talk about the Cowboys, gentlemen? No, it's all good. Yeah. I want to start with you, Stephen A. Is this solid start just a mirage? 
No. Believe it or not, as much as I'm disgusted about that it's the Cowboys, I'm not going to call it a mirage. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, the fact of the matter is, is that let's give credit where credit is due. Des Bryant hasn't been 100% healthy. Tony Romo has been out. Um, we understand that. We understand that Terrence Williams helped blow a game, all right? But he's, he's made amends for it. But led by a rookie quarterback who was a fourth-round pick and a rookie running back in Ezekiel Elliott who heard everybody like me telling them pump the brakes, perform. Don't sit there and talk about above-average performance when you had a horrible first game and a subpar second game. Over the last two weeks, he's accumulated about 278 yards on the ground. He's been very, very impressive. When you take that into account and then you come and you look at Dallas's defense, which hasn't been porous. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. they have battled. I got to give respect where it's due, okay? They've shown up. They've played. They're three and one after four games. Rookie quarterback, yeah. rookie running back, offensive line. By the way, no surprise here. They are leading the league in, in first downs or on the ground. So they, they, they know who they are. One of the things that I religiously pointed out, and this, this absolutely disgusts me. I mean, I, I mean, I don't have any material this morning. I can't get on them the way that I normally would, because Dallas, that the per, the perpetual accident waiting to happen that they are, whatever their strength is, whatever that works for them, they'll get away from it. They're not doing that here. They know that running the football, moving the chains, engaging in ball control is their bread and butter, mm -hmm. and that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I got to give credit where it's due. Will it last? Remains to be seen. Right. But it, it doesn't won't. mean that the first four <laughs> games are a mirage. I so can't a say mirage. it's a mirage. They're a mirage. First four games are a mirage. Look, last year we looked at Dallas Cowboys, at least I did, coming into the season. I thought if the defense of certain guys that, you know, had trouble off the field, that they could stay on the field and Dallas's risks paid off in terms of investing draft picks and money in them, they could have a good enough defense where that offense looked to me like it could be amazing. They could go all the way. It didn't happen, of course. But that was because their backup quarterback couldn't tread water. They couldn't tread water with their right. backup quarterback. Dak Prescott is good. I mean, so they're more than treading water. I get it. But so far, they've beaten Washington. Well, they're okay. The Bears are terrible. Mm -hmm. And the Niners, playing their second-best quarterback, by the way, are terrible. They're a combined 4-8 and eight on the season. In their power rankings, as I said, uh, uh, Washington, ESPN power rankings, 20th. San Francisco, 30th. Bears, 31st. They're playing bad teams. The rest of the way, they have the sixth hardest schedule, according mm. to ESPN. Sixth hardest schedule. Things are going to change in a hurry. Look, they have a really good offensive line, and we knew that was going to be the case. Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, the defense is not that good. Ezekiel Elliott. I, I, I'm rooting for him. Even though I'm a Giants fan, I want to see him do well. I love the fact that in college, the bigger the stakes, the better he played. Like a money player, boy, that's nothing like watching a, a, not only a good player, but a player with the chips on the line shows up. But what I've seen so far, Ryan, I got to tell you the truth, and I know he's fast on a stopwatch, right? But I haven't seen an explosive runner. I've seen a runner like, like before Navarro Bowman's injury, even yesterday, really wasn't getting much done against a, an OK, you know, yes, he's on the road, but it's, San Francisco's no great shakes. As soon as Bowman goes down, now Ezekiel Elliott gets his money. Um, the week before, he ran a lot and ran pretty well and mm -hmm. certainly accumulated a lot of yards. But so far, I don't see, I know he's like all world in yards right now, I don't see a stud running back there at the moment. I just don't see it. I, I want to see it, but I don't see it. You couple that with the fact that Dak Prescott's not going to not throw any interceptions the rest of the year as he's done so far. He's not going to be interception proof. Right. Um, and the fact that Dez is banged up and the fact they played an easy schedule coming up to a hard one, they're a rock. I think they're going to finish last in the division. Well, see, see, here's the thing. Both of you guys are technically right in some form or fashion. I agree with everything you said, Stephen. If you look at this team, you can't necessarily say they're a mirage because what they've done is tangible. Dak Prescott hasn't turned the ball over. And going into the future, we know he will because that's part of playing the position. Ezekiel Elliott has run well in the last two games. But I agree with you, too. I was waiting to see more in the open field, to see somebody that can break the big play, as we saw him do against Alabama, as you saw him do against Oregon, when the chips were down. But he's still getting those yards. And it's not a mirage because it's tangible. You know, when you're out in the desert and you need some water and you see out in the... You look out, you, you see a big pool, a pond or something, you think you're going to dive in and get wet. It's not there. This is more like fool's gold, though.
Oh, okay. Because it's there. I thought it was gold. Because it's there. It's tangible. We can touch like it. like that analogy. But as you said, though, they beat Washington. Yeah. Uh, you know, you beat Chicago. Everybody, obviously, other than Detroit, can beat them. <laughs> and San Francisco, when you have a Chip Kelly-type offense, your defense will fade in the third and the fourth quarters. You also lose Navarro Bowman. But what these guys have done is real. But now it gets real because you have the Bengals coming up. You have the Bengals. Then you have on the road at the Packers. You play the Eagles. So now we get an opportunity to see this true and to see it tested. I believe as the future goes, this team will be very good. I think Dak Prescott is the real deal. I believe Ezekiel Elliott will be a really good running back in this league. We know about the offensive line. Obviously, you need to get Dez Bryant healthy. But what they've done to this point is impressive. So now we have to just pump the brakes and say, let's see what they do when There's they play against There's more gold coming up, though, because the Browns is respect. a win. The Browns is probably a win, but the and next the Eagles three, the is a rivalry game. The next three we know, though. Uh, let me, the let next me, three let me, we're let sure me, about. Let me chime Ooh. in because I want y'all, I want to get y'all thoughts about this. This is just a belief that I have. Didn't play in the NFL. You did, so I'll defer to your expertise. I want yours, too. Here's what, what I'm thinking. Last year, the Dallas Cowboys were 4-12. and 12. All right? Mm -hmm. Still a top 10 running game. Mm -hmm. Year before, they were 12 and 4. Went to the playoffs to catch. Yep. It wasn't a catch, et cetera, right. et cetera. They had the number two running back in the, the number two running game in the NFL. Where are they right now? Number two. So what I'm saying to you is that we're looking at competition. I'm getting y'all giving me competition. And I'm not poo-pooing that. Cincinnati, Green Bay, Philadelphia right. over the next three weeks, Pittsburgh after you go against the Browns, and Baltimore. And then a home game against Washington, which won't be easy. And then after that, Minnesota and the New York Giants. I understand. The reason why I want to show, I, I know it's sacrilegious for me to do this, but the reason why I want to show the Dallas Cowboys respect is not because of their record. It's because of why. It's the fact that they are leaning on who they are. They have shown a propensity to run the football against anybody. And that's what they're doing. But if, now, if, right they were now, doing it, if they were doing it because Dak Prescott was throwing footballs all over the place in 400-yard games, that would be different. But running the football and moving the chains, to me, they can do that with that offensive line against anybody. No, I believe that they can run the football and move the chains. We've seen right. that. We're not... I agree with you that the things you pointed out about this team are true. I also believe they haven't beaten good opponents. And so for me, I need to see Dak Prescott do this under pressure. I need to see him perform when it counts against a team whose defense I respect. Oh. You look at the games that they've won defensively, the things that they've done, Church gets the, gets the interception against Cousins in the end zone. Morris Claiborne comes Morris up Morris Claiborne deserved a game the, ball right. yesterday, practically. Morris, Claibor Morris Claiborne, and the game ball he gets, though I love him, LSU guy, very happy. After they give it to him, he should walk to San Francisco and hand it to Blaine Gabbert. Right. Because yeah. you don't throw the ball before the sticks on fourth down allow me to hit. When Torrey Smith has him beaten inside, you lead him and allow him to go get the ball. Now, Morris has played very well. I don't he's think finally, he meant the throw where he threw. He just it went the throw. Right, went but there. what I'm saying is this team has played well until this point. So I can't say necessarily they haven't done the things for us to believe in mm -hmm. who they have. But it's about who you play and can you beat who you play. Real and quick, we will see that the next real, three weeks. Real quick, I think what you point out that the number two in rushing, no matter what happens, indicates that unless Ezekiel Elliott turns out to be a great running back, if he's just pretty good, they made a mistake in drafting him. Because no matter who they've put back there, their number two in yards that you gain, what do you need Ezekiel Elliott there for when you're drafting up high? You go get a defensive impact player since right. that's where you're hurting. And I'm saying I don't know if this is the week to say that after the last two weeks nope. that he's had. He's right. Combined right. with the fact that if you got a three-headed monster in him, Alfred Morris, when Darren McFadden comes back, if your signature is running behind that offensive line, then there's nothing wrong with buffering the position. Good for Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Happy for him. But Max is calling it a mirage. Stephen A. says no. Ryan uses fool's gold. But we want you guys to put in your two cents here. Is the Cowboys success legit? Or is it a mirage? Vote on Twitter. We'll share those results a little later in the show. Ryan, you are staying put, which we appreciate.